Let your heart ever sing love as you cherish the memory of our love that see you today because we have gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Glory be to God. He's alive. He lives. There's nothing brings more joy to my heart than to be able to bring those words to you. Today I'm wearing my shirt that I've had since the beginning of my ministry. It's uh, humble. <laughs> keeps me humble, keeps me reminded and grounded in the truth. You know, it's Easter weekend, and uh, here we are, 2022, and it really feels for the believers as though the end of the world, the end of life, the end of the age has come upon us. Many things are disturbing. Many things are upsetting for our spirit and our flesh these days. I had something that was brought to my attention and, I, and I'd just like to share that with you. You know, we hear uh, about Jesus Christ being crucified, and in his day, you know, the cross was repulsive. It was the, the, the sign of tyranny. It was a sign of thievery, robbery. It was the sign of, of the Roman Empire. Prior to the Roman Empire, there was no crucifixions. They invented a way to torment the people. You know, the cross was reserved for those who uh, went out against the Roman Empire, whether in speech, that's why it's, you know, Jesus, King of the Jews. That was a, a, an attack against Rome. Rome, nobody could be king of any territory unless the Roman Empire ordained it. If you attacked the empire, this was what the cross represented. There, it was a representation of pure evil. And it was a place of extraordinary suffering. It was made to make you suffer. Not to kill you, but to make you suffer. In fact, it worked so well, they had to invent a new word to describe the amount of suffering it put upon people. It was horrible, it was horrific. And that word was excruciating. Not just pain, but excruciating. It was dirty, it was rugged, it was nasty, and yet today, thousands of years later, we, we make that cross beautiful. I mean, it's, it's stained all nice. 
put her lacquer on it, make it protected, make it shine, make it beautiful. And then we, as believers, we, we stuff that cross in the back, in the back room, in the back, behind us. And yeah, if you're looking today, you, you see it, but you see it in the back of the room. Yet in that day, it was bold, and it was the big white elephant that was standing right in the middle of the room. And it was disgusting. It wasn't all smooth. It was that old rugged cross, and on it was nothing but the stains of blood. I hope in the ministry and in the messages you've, you've heard me preach over the many years that when I say it's not about us, it's about Jesus Christ and what he did, it's him spilling his blood for the sake of sinners. He, he came into this world, into this existence, in order to save sinners. He, he didn't come into this world to save the good, right? We, we as Christians and believers, we, we proudly boast about the good within us and how pure we are and how pure we want to be, but Jesus didn't come to save the good man. Jesus didn't come to save a righteous man. He came to save the sinners. He came to save people like you and like me. And that's why I, I constantly say Jesus is more than willing to accept you just the way you are. Because he knows who you are. Right? We all are proud, especially as believers. We are proud to say, God knows my heart. But you have no idea how true that statement is. Jesus didn't come to save you because he knows the goodness within your heart. He came to save sinners. And that's tough. That's tough for a good person to accept. That's tough for a righteous man to accept. That's tough for a person who is doing everything they can to prove they are pure and holy to accept that Jesus Christ came to save the alcoholic. Jesus Christ came to save the drug addict. Jesus Christ came to save the murderers. He came to save liars. He came to save adulterers. He came to save sinners. He came to save you, to save me. He came into this world to destroy the works of Satan, to destroy the, the works of flesh. And we all know that the, the works of flesh is sexual immorality. He came to save the guy who is addicted to porn. He, he came to save the drunkard, right? Drunkenness, debauchery. We know those are the works of flesh. Fits of anger came to save the angry man. People who are lost frustration, anger, envy, came to save that guy who is jealous. He came to save the sinner. And if we put the, the reality of that cross in the middle of the room, full of stickers, without the varnish, without the, the, the beauty, without the sandpaper, 
full of stains, the stains of blood. When we put it in the middle of the room, it becomes gross. It becomes disgusting. No, we, we want the cross, Jesus Christ, bore. You know, that gold one that's round our neck, all shiny and beautiful, the, the silver cross that we love to wear. We love to wear and carry around the cross of Jesus Christ. But the reality is, it was rugged, it was dirty, and it was stained with blood. He came to save the sinner, which we are them. That's why it's kind of hard to go into a, a church gathering and find righteous people. This is what, what new and young believers struggle with. They go to church and they expect to find good. They expect to find righteous. They expect to find the pure and the holy. And then they don't find it. They find a house full of broken people doing their best to pretend like they're not broken. Because Jesus Christ came to save the sinner. And if we could just humble ourselves, remind ourselves that the glory of God's goodness came to, to rain mercy on no mercy. That's why Jesus Christ didn't carry around a beautifully dressed up cross in the back of the room. No, he came to carry a dirty, nasty cross that offended everyone. And they placed it right in the middle of town on a hill where it could not be hidden called God Golgotha. And that's our sin. That's why many people have struggles watching movies like The Passion of the Christ. That's our sin. That's what you see in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Our sin. And our sin is so prevalent it can't be hidden. It can't be stuffed in the back of the room because it's right there standing in the face of everyone. It's not about us. It's about what Jesus Christ did to save us. And that's how God displays the glory of his love to a people who were not called his people. <clears throat> right? The, the, the son of the living God. The reflection of God's glory is seen in a sinless man. Is seen in an innocent man is seen in a righteous man, is seen in Jesus Christ. Not the sinners, not us. But God came, Jesus came, to be crucified to the flesh so that we may be purchased and bought as adopted sons. So God may fulfill his word. 
to a people who it was said, you are not my people. I will say you are my people. And they will say you are my God. You know, many people, millions of people were crucified back in that time, in that era, in that day. In fact, on the very day Jesus Christ was crucified, there was three crosses, but only one mattered. Only one stood up throughout the time and the times and the times that's still there 2,000 years later, standing strong, representing the glory of God's love, and that's the cross of Jesus Christ. Because he did the things that no one else could do. He proved by the power of his good character that his integrity was strong. He proved by the power of his actions his word was true. You know, that's the thing is Jesus spoke many times about his crucifixion, spoke many times about the resurrection prior to it happening. And everybody, every time he'd speak of it, they would not accept it. You know, the Son of Man must be rejected by the elders and the church and his countrymen. You know, no prophet who is born within his own country is accepted by his countrymen. You know, the Son of Man must endure great amounts of suffering. He must die, be buried in the grave, and then rise back to life. If I am the Son of Man, <coughs> And I will tear down this temple and rebuild it within three days. Speaking, of course, of his own body. Declaring to the world that my body houses the spirit of the living God. And every time his, his disciples, his students, his followers, his friends would say, oh, no, Lord, it can't be so. It can't be so. But what he was saying to them is, I didn't come into the world to save the good and the righteous, the holy, and he who is without blemish. I came to save you, the sinners. What did Paul say? A man who spent most of his life persecuting, beating up, and hurting the followers of Jesus Christ. It wasn't until I crucified myself with the Lord, it wasn't until the Lord crucified me that I was able to be what God asked me to be. For I died, I no longer live, but it is now Christ who lives within me. It's for that reason that I crucified the flesh and, and the desires of the flesh. And what is the desires of the flesh? The desires of the flesh are to prove to our neighbors, to prove to each other, to prove to ourselves that there's no way God came into this world and suffered and died as a result of my sins because I'm good and I can make it into heaven. 
And I know how to do it. I'm righteous. I'm the guy God loved. Because my deeds were good. As Paul said, if I have anything to boast in, I could boast in the law because I'm a Pharisee and, and I know the law and I obey the law. I could boast in my zeal because I persecuted those who believed in Jesus Christ. I could boast that I am a Benjaminite <coughs> from the tribe of Israel. I could boast that I was circumcised on the eighth day. I know the way of holiness. I am good and I am righteous. But I consider every bit of that dirty rags, disgusting, vile, and unworthy of the grace of Jesus Christ. If I'm going to boast in anything, I'm going to boast in Christ alone, who died, who suffered, who gave up his life for the chief of sinners. I'm going to boast in the love of God that showed mercy to no mercy. <clears throat> I'm going to start by crucifying my flesh and the desires of it <clears throat> so I may walk in the spirit and the desires of the spirit for God so loved the world for God so loved the sinners he gave his one and only son so that those who believed in him, who placed their faith in him, who rested in him, in his work, could be saved and receive eternal life. They didn't rest and believe in the goodness that was dwelling within their heart. As God once said, be aware of your heart because it, it is deceiving and it is the most deceptive thing in the world. It, your own heart, will lead you astray. Don't be a fool. No, I am the Lord your God. You know, that's, that's something we, we struggle with as believers. You know, can you imagine being asked to carry the cross of Christ? Jesus says, you're not worthy of me unless you pick up your own cross and carry it. Follow me. Jesus was beaten down and, and broken so bad. I, I just went on a walk yesterday to the top of the hill that's above our town. But there are three crosses that overlook the town. One of, one of the reasons we moved here Jesus definitely dwells within this town. And, and we saw those three crosses that stand above this town as a clear sign. God is with us. About a half mile walk, straight up a hill, just like they did in the days of Jesus Christ to the Mount of Golgotha. Only I didn't have a cross to carry. And I hadn't been subject to a violent beating, being whipped, 
having my hair pulled out, my, rip, my, my beard torn out. I didn't have a crown of thorns sunk into my head. And I wasn't sitting there being beat down and mocked. Oh, hail, hail, king of the Jews. I was feeling pretty good. Yeah, when I got to the top of the hill, I was, man, I'm tired. Could you imagine just being out there minding your own business like Simon of Cyrene? Coming in from the countryside in the town, minding his own business, have no idea what's going on, and just being thrust right in to this nasty situation. The spectacle that everyone was a part of. That's the thing the devil never wants anybody to know. There was doctors there. There was moms there. There was children there. There was husbands there. There was old people there. There was young people there. Centurion soldiers were there. The king of the Jews, Herod, was knew all about it. Pilate. They were all there. His disciples, his friends, his mother was there. The whole town was there. Crucify him. Kill him. Show him no mercy. Spitting on him. Even Simon was there. Carry this cross for him. He can't do it on his own. Can you imagine that? The glory of God's image. I can't do it on my own. God, word of God, had the power to create stars, to blow a sun out of his nostril, to create the moon, the earth, and all the life within it, and could not carry his own cross. Or was it the realization that the cross he was carrying wasn't even his own? Simon, being forced to carry another man's cross, forced to carry another man's burden. The cross of God, the burden of God. Carries that cross, and I, I'll carry it, I know, I'm sure he said, but when we get to the top of that mountain, I've done my duty, I'm done. It is this man <coughs> who's to be hung on that cross. Not me. Don't get confused. And all the while, Jesus bore the sin of Simon. Simon carried the cross while well, Jesus took the punishment he may have deserved because Jesus Christ came for sinners. He came for you. He came for me. He came to save the wicked. God takes no pleasure 
and the destruction of wicked, wicked people. Rather, he desires they would repent and be saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus taking on the punishment a sinner deserved in order to save that sinner, in order to justify, satisfy the wrath of God. As we know, and spoken through the books of Leviticus, God, in order for him to be just, righteous, holy, good, honorable, and honest, cannot allow evil and the workers of evil into heaven, into his living space. Because God is light, and within him is no darkness. We must punish sin. But the good news is, he who was without sin gave up his life so that he who was with sin might be saved. Everything Jesus said, everything that's spoken in the, in the Old Testament about the Messiah, about the Lord, about God, came true through him. And everyone there participated in it. Jesus came to save the guy who rejected him, who denied him, came to save the group of people who abandoned him. Came to save the group of people who gambled over his garments, cared more about his clothing and the value of his clothing. I want that. I want it so much I'm willing to gamble over it. And they did the very life he so lived. Came to save a man who with one final gesture to see to it that he was dead and dead, dead, dead. Pierced him with his saber and his spear. The other Two hanging on the cross, both had their legs broken because it was against the rules. It was against God's law to crucify people on Passover, on a day that was designed by God as the day of atonement. On this day, we are to atone for the sins of the sinners. Can't be murdering people on that day. Break their legs, make sure they die before the sun goes down. And yet Jesus was already dead. No need to break his legs, he's dead. Well, let's make sure he's dead. <clears throat> they grabbed the spear, 
He sticks it into his side and out from that flows blood and water. It's prophetic. The blood and the water of the lamb, the water, the rock that gave drink to the many. From him, his side, flowed the truth of God. I am the God who shows mercy on no mercy. Do not do this for your own sake, for the sake of declaring your good name or your righteousness. It came for my own sake because I am good. I am righteous. And I can't destroy somebody who is a slave to a foreign power. Sin, alcoholism, drugs, adultery, pornography, anger, hatred, us, slaves to flesh. Because I'm righteous, God, being rich in mercy and steadfast love, gave life to you, and that life come through Jesus Christ. And evidence that every word Jesus Christ spoke was the truth, was seen at the resurrection. Everybody who loved Jesus showed up on the first day of the week. his dead body to make sure it was properly seasoned <laughs> properly wrapped it was properly taken care of I showed up to the grave only to find that grave empty empty Jesus Christ saying with some of his final breath, it is finished. The work of God is finished. I have endured the wrath of God for your sake. I have come to show mercy to no mercy and it is finished. Now, I commence my spirit into your hands. The dead rose first. Christ rose from the grave. Death and decay, corruption, had no hold over him as he came to conquer death and hell. He came to conquer the chains that bound us as sinners. He came to set you free. slaves 
but adopted children of God. By the power of the resurrection, God proved every word Jesus spoke was the truth. And this is the truth behind his word. Everyone who looks upon me has looked upon God. I came to save the world and not condemn it. That's the truth. <laughs>